Hi, this is Asin. You are now watching Asin Math TV. Today, we would like to share how to solve this non homogeneous differential equation. Firstly, obtain the complementary function for the associated homogeneous equation, which is the left hand side. We can express in terms of m by referring to the order of the derivatives. This is second order, so we can take m to the power of 2. This is zero order, so m to the power of 0 with the corresponding coefficient 1 plus a square and we set equal to zero which means that we have m square plus a square is equal to zero and m square is equal to minus a square take the square of both sides so which means that m is equal to plus minus a square of negative one is equal to i so which means that it's supposed to have in the form of e plus minus q i since we obtain complex roots which means that the complementary function is equal to e to the power of px times c1 cos qx plus c2 sine qx in other words the complementary function for this differential equation is equal to e to the power of p p is equal to zero power zero we obtain one so one times anything we get by the same thing which is c1 cos qx q is equal to a for this case so we have ax and we plus c2 sine ax next obtain the particular integral by referring to the non-homogeneous equation which is the right hand side since the right hand side is in terms of trigonometric functions but it's not in terms of cosine or sine function which means that we should apply the Ronsky method recall that the particular integral should have the form of ax times u1x plus bx times u2x which means that we should have ax is equal to negative integrate 1 over the Ronsky determinant times we take the cross function u2 x times fx and integrate with respect to x where fx is the non-homogeneous equation and we can rewrite as 1 over cos since secant is equal to 1 over cos and for the function px is equal to integrate 1 over the Ronsky determinant and we take the cross function u1 x also times the function fx and integrate with respect to x so which means that from here we should first determine the Ronsky determinant we have to bear in mind that this Ronsky determinant is a 2 by 2 determinant so we refer to this function and let the first function be u1 x and second function be u2 x and the form should have u1 x u2 x and we differentiate with respect to x so which means that the Ronsky determinant we should have the form of cos ax sine ax and differentiate cos with respect to x we obtain negative sine differentiate the angle ax we obtain a differentiate sine function we obtain cos differentiate ax we obtain a applying the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix so which means that we should take a times d minus b times c so which means that we have cos times cos is cos square ax 1 times a is a and we minus negative a sine times sine sine square ax and we have a take out cos square ax minus minus plus sine square ax applying the trigonometric identity cos square plus sine square is equal to 1 so which means that the Ronsky determinant is equal to simply a and now we can obtain the function ax and dx let's substitute the value and the functions that we obtain into the function of a and b respectively so we have negative integrate 1 over a u2x is equal to sine ax times fx which is 1 over cos ax and integrate with respect to x and this is equal to since this is constant we can take out negative 1 over a integrate sine over cos is tangent ax when we integrate tangent we should obtain 
negative loan cost with the angle AX. Since the angle is AX, which means that we should times 1 over A. And we should obtain negative, negative, positive. 1 over A times 1 over A, 1 over A squared. So we have loan cost AX. On the other hand, for the function BX, we have integrate 1 over A times U1X, which is cos AX. And the function 1 over cos AX. Integrate with respect to x. Cos cancel with cos no more. So which means that we integrate constant with respect to x and we should have x over a. In other words, the particular integral is equal to ax, which is 1 over a square loan cos ax times u1x, which is cos ax and we plus dx which is x over a and we times u2x which is sine ax. The reason we can ignore the constant term when we integrate the function ax and bx is because that can be absorbed by the arbitrary constants in the complementary function. In other words, that will not affect the general solution for this differential equation. And we can now write the general solution for this differential equation, which is equal to the complementary function plus the particular integral. And this is equal to c1 cos ax plus c2 sine ax and we plus cos ax times ln cos ax divided by a square plus x times sine ax divided by a and hence we done. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a lot of this. See you.